Welcome to Podcast with Magnoni. I'm so, so excited to have you today. Today is a very special, 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 special edition of Podcast with Magnoni. I have a wonderful a guest whose name is Wonderful as well. So it's going to be an interesting one. So today I'm talking to Wonderful Nkuche, uh, a renowned person, a uh, social commentator, uh, in issues of politics, and so many things. I think he will explain himself. Uh, but to, you are with me, McDonald. I'm happy to have you here. So, Wanda, I think your story is so big, but we'll try to compress it as much as we can yeah. and, and focus on a number of things that I'm so excited to talk about. Yeah. So let's start with your story. What's your backstory? People look at you in the newspaper. It's so many things. What's, what's your backstory? Yeah, uh, first of all, uh, thank you for uh, hosting me. Uh, this is a good platform. Uh, you are doing a good job uh, trying to uh, uh, give people a chance to uh, air out uh, their views or their expertise. Uh, so thank you for uh, for this opportunity. Yeah, uh, as you have said, people uh, know me uh, through a lot of things, yeah. uh, more especially about uh, politics and also yeah. uh, humanism. Mm. So some could be wondering uh, how I got to be here. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, just in brief, uh, the issues that I talk about concerning uh, humanism mm. uh, comes from uh, my life. Mm. Uh, and again, uh, I also uh, studied uh, theology uh, at mm. Nzozo University. Yeah. Um, so after that, I went to uh, Chancellor College. Uh, it is now uh, just University of Malawi, mm. where I did uh, political uh, science. Mm. So you can see uh, that my issues uh, center around so related, uh, yeah. Uh, these two, mm. Uh, mm. because mm. Uh, these are the things that I know. Uh, uh, I know uh, I have uh, the expertise. Mm. I studied them. Mm. Uh, so that is why I keep on uh, engaging uh, on issues around these two uh, things. Yeah, mm. yeah. I, I think I think we we come from uh, the same the same past, so to say. I did theology as well, uh, but I think you came out to be uh, one of the stars in terms of uh, your engagement with the with the with the discipline some of us we engage with the discipline but i think not to an extent that you do yeah. but let's talk about Nzuzi university you wrote a book at Nzuni, and i think that becomes the beginning of so many things that you have done lately yeah, yeah. Uh, that was in uh, 2010 mm. uh, when i was uh, finishing my my studies at, at Nzuzi university mm. but i had an opportunity uh, to be part of uh, the zen africa uh, challenge yeah uh, but, but, Ah, this program. is crazy. I used to watch you while I was at home. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because I came in at Zodi uh, in 2011. Okay. So 2010, we were at home watching yeah. the Zen Africa Challenge. Yeah, but I, I was part of that group. Yeah. So, yeah, we went to uh, Uganda, mm. uh, participated in, uh, in this uh, quiz program. Mm. So uh, for me, it was a, 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 an opportunity yeah. uh, which I thought uh, before I leave the university, mm. I have to write a book, mm. uh, share uh, with uh, the rest of uh, my fellow students mm. on how uh, it was and the experience, uh, the things that I, I learned from uh, the competition. Mm. So I sat down, uh, wrote the book, mm. even though there were a lot of assignments, exams. <laughs> I imagine. But yeah, but I tried to uh, create time for the book. Mm. So I wrote it and then uh, it was launched, I remember, in November uh, 2010. Mm. Uh, that was a month before uh, leaving Zuz Invest. Amazing. Now, it's not easy to write a book while you are at, this, at, at the university. Okay. Bearing so many activities okay. that are happening there, mm -hmm. and you have to balance up with uh, with writing a book. Yeah, and uh, by that time I was also uh, doing my dissertation. Yeah, uh, I, I didn't uh, perform that well in my dissertation <laughs> because you were busy with the I book. I the, the book for for that, <laughs> but I think it could be unfair. Uh, yeah, it could be unfair. Yeah, you I never know. know. Yeah, you I never know. know. Anyway, uh, Zoz University, I uh, should go there. Let's focus now about the writing that you have been doing lately. I think one of the climax that I, I have in mind is uh, 
uh, the biography of uh, uh, Billy Kaunda. Um, an interesting book I hear uh, that you have you have done. Uh, there are not ma- not so many biographies in Malawi. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. We are talking about my uh, writing journey. Uh, after the Zuzu uh, University book, mm. uh, I was also writing, but uh, publishing in the uh, local newspapers. Mm. Uh, I also created uh, my own blog and also uh, mm. websites yeah. where I was writing, uh, more especially about politics, mm. uh, music, mm. uh, religion. Mm. Yeah, so I kept on uh, engaging uh, the knowledge that uh, I had. Mm. And then uh, later on, uh, I was given a, a column uh, mm. in a Sunday Times newspaper. Mm. Uh, we call it Science and uh, Critical Thinking. Yeah, that, so, that, that's awkward <laughs> kind of section <laughs> where if you want to, to read that material uh, coming from there, you really need to be a person who's uh, who is strong up there. Otherwise, yeah, yeah. otherwise I will, I will convince you otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I Right uh, in that column, mm. more especially in uh, humanism, yeah. uh, secular humanism. Mm. So I use my uh, theology knowledge to mm. discuss on uh, some of the uh, things that we do as Malawians mm. in terms of our uh, our religion. Our religion, yeah. Yeah. yeah anyway, before I, I, I will go into humanism because it's a subject that is interesting just to know so I can hear from you. Um, and people uh, within my channel can also hear from you around what is it all about, what are your arguments, uh, ATC. Uh, but let's talk about your writing. You did a biography um, with uh, Birka Kaunda. It was accessible for a great launch. Um, what, what is happening there? Are you working on any biography? Uh, should we expect something coming soon? Yeah, uh, it's true uh, from... Uh, early last year, mm. uh, that's when I met uh, Billy Kaunda. Mm. So most people know uh, Billy Kaunda uh, in Malawi. He's yeah, yeah. Most, uh, he's so popular. Uh, musicians. He's so popular. So I approached him mm. uh, by saying, uh, "You have a good uh, life story, mm. uh, but then it has to come out. People just know uh, the Billy Kaunda from the CDs, mm. uh, radio, mm. uh, from the tapes, mm. but they have to know." Uh, who you are, mm. uh, what things you did uh, to be where you are now. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. he agreed and then we started uh, working on the book. Mm. Uh, we called it uh, Hills and Valleys. Mm. So the idea of his, Hills and Valleys is to say that life is about ups and downs. Yeah. And that is uh, the story uh, that one can find uh, mm. inside uh, the book. The book yeah. So we worked on it. Uh, we launched it uh, this year uh, mm. in June. Mm. Yeah, it was uh, it's a successful uh, project. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, and I would like to uh, thank uh, Billy Kaunda for uh, his commitment. Yeah, he's a humble man. Mm. Yeah, uh, it was uh, fun and mm. also easy uh, to work with him. Yeah, yeah, but then uh, besides that, I'm also uh, working on a biography mm. uh, of uh, Lucius Banda. Wow. Another successful uh, musician. Yeah, yeah, he is. He is. Yeah, so uh, the biography is uh, Lucius Banda, the man, the music, and the politics. <laughs> yeah. What a breakdown. <laughs> what a title. <laughs> the man, the music, and the politics. Yeah, so. Wow. Uh, uh, from those who know uh, Lucius Banda, mm. uh, we have listened to him from 1993. Uh, yeah, 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 I was just born in his music up to now. Yeah, right? it's yeah. almost uh, 30 years. 30 years, yeah. yeah. yeah so a lot has been happening. Oh, mm. He has said or oh, he has sung a lot uh, in these years, mm. uh, especially about uh, politics, because that is, that is my area of concern. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I went into his music mm. uh, to find out uh, the political uh, journey mm. uh, of uh, Malawi's democracy mm. through his music. Through his music. Yeah, so from there we can see the man in him, mm-hmm. uh, the music in him, yeah. and also the politics in him. So that's yeah. why, uh, you know, there are so many people that listen to music. Yeah. But I think your 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 ear to music yeah. is different yeah, okay. uh, because you see, um, people will listen to him, will listen to a story, maybe that he he coined in one of his music, and they'll be like, yeah, I think he was mentioning about this. Yeah. But you took time to understand the concept. Yeah. You were understanding him. 
as a person yeah. and you're understanding the circumstances you were surrounded with mm-hmm. and you're able to tell a story out of his music yeah. um, it's, it's not just music yeah uh, a musician doesn't just uh, do music for the sake of it yeah, no 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 the inside uh, that music there's uh, his emotions yeah his character true uh, his views true so these are the things that i was uh, looking uh, mm. for inside uh, inside the songs wow. and uh, lucius banda himself saying uh, he commended me that he thinks i know his music better than himself <laughs> <laughs> you should you should I, I've, i've seen you doing summaries of music yeah summaries of some songs that we think we know mm-hmm. but, but the, the way you explain yeah, them yeah. i don't know man. i don't know you you have um this is that ear to malawi music where you understand and not even malawi music alone i've seen you doing an analysis of a jay-z song yeah going my, deep my into my favorite the, rap yeah your favorite rap is jay-z <laughs> uh where you go and understand the lyrics and you try to tell a story out of the lyrics yeah mm. Mm. so um It's another uh, good project. Yeah. Uh, I've been working with uh, Lucius Banda himself. Yeah. He's 100% uh, in it. Yeah. So uh, when the book is out, uh, mm. people should expect uh, a story uh, mm. they have never read or known before about uh, Lucius Banda. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's huge. Honestly, these people that we know, we know them sometimes as politicians, as yeah. musicians, but there's a lot of st- The, the backstory, backstory huge backstory yeah, that they come from yeah, yeah they come from these backgrounds that sometimes, sometimes we feel like we are so special yeah, we have struggled but, but some of these people they have struggled they yeah, have seen to be where they are today yeah uh, they have gone through a lot mm. so we were just listening to them they yeah. didn't tell us uh, their stories in detail yeah, yeah, so yeah. this is the opportunity uh, to understand how Lucius Banda became mm. the soldier mm. uh, we know today and why soldier because the it, word soldier it, yeah and connotes it, something yeah and why soldier yeah uh, how does it relate to him as, to a, him person as a person so uh, his music yeah. so all these things are inside the book amazing yeah. i can't wait to have that book uh, i'm looking forward to that when yeah, it's ready and, and besides uh, that book uh, uh, i've also published another one wow Yeah so just the 2021 there will be uh, three books coming out. Wow. So wow. you can see that I was <laughs> working extra hard. Ah you have been working extra hard. <laughs> you have um uh, uh, a column in the paper. Yeah. You write um in diff- on different platforms. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, you are, are doing, doing books and books as well. No, books, books are not it's, it's not a simple project it's a major project yeah it's, it's not easy to come up uh, with a book no 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 in this day consider a lot of things yeah uh, yeah uh, what the reader uh, is going to find out inside yeah book. the value yeah yeah how you are going to express yourself mm. how uh, do you choose uh, the language that you, you have used you, you're using yeah. yeah so all those things have to be uh, considered in You just you don't write uh, for the sake of writing yeah yeah so Amazing. so uh, the the third book is uh, on humanism and politics in malawi okay so i've just uh, combined uh, these two areas that uh, i think uh, you are you're more passionate about yeah so just a combination of uh, these two areas and then seeing them mm. uh, from the malawian uh, perspective. perspective yeah yeah I don't know you, you the, the way you're talking you're talking about these issues reminds me uh the school days yeah. where you try to understand phenomena <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. it's crazy but this is huge honestly I'm so I'm so happy for you yeah, uh for the successive launch of the Bire Kaunda one yeah and then uh, looking forward to the uh looking forward to the uh, Lucius Banda one yeah. that one will be huge I know and uh, also looking forward to your book around humanism and um, and politics in Malawi. I think that would be interesting as well because those are major topics on their own and yeah, to be combined well, in one book. Mm. Yeah, but th- these are things that we normally don't uh, talk about in Malawi. Mm. Uh, uh, I know, I understand that uh, most people are uh, religious, they yeah. belong to Christianity, Islam and other different uh, religions. Yeah. But then uh, looking at uh, religion mm. or, or or non religion mm. uh, from the uh, humanism aspect mm. uh, we don't uh, talk much about that so i took time to look into uh, these issues these yeah. uh, small details mm. and uh, bring out uh, my views yeah. so not 
writing as a, an outsider mm. um, writing as a, an insider mm. because mm. myself I'm also uh, a humanist let's, let's talk, talk about, about that okay <laughs> um i want to approach your your argument about humanism from a perspective of um, of how you argue around issues yeah very recently we had a scenario in mongochi mm. where uh we don't know the evidence but it is alleged that uh, uh the pastor of one church uh drew uh what he thought is is the god of israel mm -hmm. and i think the the muslim community in mongochi yeah, who but, are yeah. a lot of them mm. uh felt offended yeah. and they went and bent the church yeah. and they were looking for the for the person mm -hmm. <laughs> they were hunting for his blood. Yeah, um, I, so, and you spoke something on your on your Facebook wall. You say I, I don't I don't have the right quote here, um, but you said something uh, about us humanists. We feel this is why we don't have we don't we're not religious. Yeah, because you find a lot of injustice in being religious mm -hmm. than when you're not religious. Yeah, let's start from there. Yeah. Um, I, it's been a, a long journey or mm. story for me to be uh, who I am today. Yeah, I was born uh, a Christian. Mm. Uh, I've been a Christian for over twenty years. Mm. Yeah, but then very interesting. Uh, I've been a Christian over twenty years. Yeah, it's like it's years. like okay, okay. I used to be a Christian. It's like I used to be married. Okay, I hear you. Let's let's get into it. Over twenty years. Yeah, over twenty years. Mm. Uh, but then uh, after some time. Yeah, uh, that's when I started uh, thinking deep about mm. uh, some of the things that I used to believe or mm. I used to to practice. Mm. So I realized uh, that religion mm. is uh, something which is man-made. Mm. Uh, people look at religion as something which uh, comes from God uh, uh, down to man. Mm. But I started looking at uh, religion as a uh, things that we just uh, made uh, made as uh, as humans mm. because if it came from god mm. then we couldn't have all these uh, different religions mm. and inside even uh, uh, one religion for example islam or, or, or christianity mm. we also have uh, different views and we feel the same yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so if it came from god mm. i don't think there could have been uh, these differences so your source of um, I, it might not be one source, but one of your arguments is the differences within one faith mm -hmm. does not justify why there is one God who commands such difference. Yeah, wouldn't someone argue that one is one of them is right and one and, and the rest are wrong? So, probably the, the concept of the devil uh makes sense that he brought a bit of confusion in and how people understand. Uh, religion so that he he would be successful in manipulating what is deemed as the truth uh no uh, as said mm. uh, religion is uh, man made mm. so everything that happens inside mm. religion because mm. devil is also part of uh, religion mm. so all these concepts about uh, god about the devil mm. about whatever mm. uh, these are uh, things that uh, people uh, just made up mm. to answer some of the questions that they have uh, in this life mm. yeah so yeah uh, that's the evidence mm. yeah that's I, the evidence. I hear you mm. you used to be a christian yeah. and that's that's how it's going to be interesting yeah. you used to be a christian and um i think you were seven feet day yeah seven feet days and, 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 and not just uh, just a christian mm. but i was also once a deacon and also a wow. church elder Wow! When I was uh, in my early twenties, yes, and this should tell you that uh, I was a, a faithful Christian. Yes, you were yeah, so devoted. That people could trust me with uh, positions. With, uh, these uh, positions. Okay. Mm -hmm. What was the transition like mm -hmm. for you to move from being a Christian uh, who is having uh, these thoughts, um, and you have preached? Yeah. I would assume as yeah. a church older yeah. as a deacon you would be given um, a platform to preach yeah. what was the transition like from you believing into and believing what was this process like was it a day how long have you fought with the feeling of that I am wrong in believing that there's a deity somewhere well the transition took uh, 
years. Uh, mm. It wasn't just a day, weeks or months, but yeah. years. Mm. Uh, I should say uh, it started around uh, 2011, uh, 2012. Mm. Uh, that's when I started uh, looking deep uh, into uh, these issues. Yeah. So I remember uh, in 2012, uh, that is when I was, uh, uh, I was told uh, mm. that I have to lead a certain church uh, as a church elder. Wow. But I was honest enough uh, to the pastor mm. that uh, I, I, I will be there mm. uh, as a church elder. Mm. But you don't have to uh, depend uh, on much on me mm. because I think I'm going through uh, a certain process of uh, questioning some of the uh, beliefs that I have. Mm. So the pastor said, I, it's normal uh, mm. for people to go uh, through that. Yeah. yeah. But I further told him that uh, for me, mm. it is not just a something which is uh, temporary. Mm. I think uh, it is something which uh, will be uh, permanent. Yeah. So I was simply uh, telling him mm. uh, just to avoid uh, future uh, confrontations because yeah. uh, for example, in the uh, seventh day, we used to have uh, Bible studies. Yeah. So in these uh, platforms, I would mm say something different from what, uh, what everyone people, is expecting uh, they'll be like you were you, that person yeah. where if, if you want to do a comment mm. the pastor is worried he's like oh <laughs> this guy again yeah, here he comes here he comes <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it, it reached uh, that stage mm. but then I think people just uh, got used uh, of me yeah uh, but after some time, uh, that's when I started uh, having these uh, deep questions, mm. deep answers to yeah. myself. Mm. And then uh, after some time, that is when I was trying to move myself mm. out of the church physically. Mm. Mm. Uh, mm. First of all, it was mentally. Mm. Uh, and then physically, that is when I was trying to move myself uh, out of the church. How did you deal with the pastor? Uh, because if you were, he was entrusting you mm. with bigger positions. I would assume that he would be more personal with you to ask you, maybe to, to try to to convert you. What um, happened? No, I, uh, we didn't talk much uh, with the pastor. Mm. So it was just uh, that uh, brief conversation. Mm. And then he would see uh, my comments inside uh, the church and yeah. then he took it as something normal. Mm. So he didn't think that I could go uh, to this extent. Yeah. But I was open enough to him that uh, my questions mm. uh, or my problem is mm. something permanent, mm. not uh, something uh, uh, temporary. Yeah. So we used to have uh, some uh, uh, few uh, confrontations. confrontations yeah uh, even the way uh, I, w I was dressing at church yeah. because you know pastors they expect you to be in a suit yeah in a suit um, yeah, yeah. But for me i don't uh, like putting on a suit Su suits so it's are traditions a, yeah, right it's, it's, it's just, just a tradition i like putting on a shirt so for him he said you know as a church order uh, yeah, you don't have to, to yeah. dress like this you weren't yeah you weren't yeah. have you weren't Passing through, you was using the etiquette so far, yeah. Of an elder, mm. anyway. Interesting. I know what is. F I know I've struggled with faith before. Mm. Uh, I'm a Christian. Um, I did theology like you. Um, before theology, I had a very confusing moment mm. um, when I felt like I was cursed. Because yeah. I, I, I kept on applying for university. They kept on dropping me. Mm. Coming from a very poor background, things were so hard. There was nothing that would work with me. And I felt like I felt like the, the God that I was praying to doesn't answer. And it was just <laughs> fate that was flowing. Because it's just the same people uh, that are having some specific opportunities. Mm. Keep on having them. And uh, I keep on trying. So when I went to, the, to, to, to Zuni uh, doing theology... I think the first semester was hard because yeah. mm -hmm. I learned these things, these deep questions I never asked about religion. Yeah. And I know that every time people talk about, um, I don't believe in God or I have a struggle with this faith and stuff. Some people will just shut you down. Like, no, no, no that's a yeah, demon. No. Mm -hmm. Let's just cast it. Yeah. Uh, I've had that experience. As pe well. People have told you that they have to cast demons on you. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Imagine. Yeah. And I, and I know that even if my pastor is watching this, we we'll watch this <laughs> episode will be like, what? <laughs> this guy would even invite a, a second human to, to, to have a conversation with. But when I did theology, mm. uh, because we were doing theology, 
from a secular perspective, yeah. not from my church-based no, kind of doctrine, yeah. mm-hmm. which was interesting because he gave me questions and I asked so many questions to a religion. I think for me, my personal position around religion mm-hmm. is different from how it's practiced. And I know I belong to church, yeah. but I have things that I don't believe in yeah. and things that I believe in. Um, I believe God exists in my context mm-hmm. because of a few experiences I've had uh, where I believe they were aided by um, some supernatural interventions. Yeah. People would argue otherwise. Uh, I think they have a right to their opinion. Yeah. But when I was in first year and I was struggling with faith, you know, there's something inside of me. I don't know how you, you deal with that and how you dealt with that. Where, because the majority, you would think, you, I think would say three quarters of the world is religious in whatever way. Yeah. How do you feel being in a religious person in an environment where people's lives center on religion doesn't it defeat you inside uh, i think during the uh, the first days yeah. uh, i had that uh, struggle mm. uh, but then uh, in life it's all about uh, confidence in mm. who you are mm. in your views yeah uh, when people ask you questions about uh, your ideas or mm just to who you are, you have to explain them uh, in a clear way. Mm. Uh, I should also admit that uh, during the journey, uh, mm. there are things about uh, contradiction. Yeah, You may think you have all the answers, mm. but then you still have uh, some contradictions. Yeah. And it's not just in humanism, even mm. for those uh, in religion. Yeah. They have uh, uh, this kind of thing, just yeah. asking uh, questions. A lot of questions, yeah. And maybe you don't have uh, answers uh, uh, at that particular moment. Mm. Yeah, so it's all about just uh, going back and you try to answer uh, uh, these questions that you you are not able uh, to answer at that uh, particular uh, moment. Mm. So as time goes, you find the answers, uh, people ask you, and then you give them uh, the clear uh, uh, answers. Mm. But it's difficult uh, in Malawi where uh, most people are indeed uh, religious. Mm. Uh, for a person like me who is uh, public about my uh, humanism, yeah. I've had to uh, suffer uh, a few uh, consequences. Consequences of uh, yeah, yeah, because, segregation. Yeah, because people <laughs> uh, don't trust you. They say, uh, you should be a devil. You, yeah, how can you be good uh, without God? Yay, the argument of good and bad in the yeah. yeah I remember so that. They, they say, uh, what's your motivation to be good? Mm. So, and from that uh, question, you can see that most people are mm. motivated to do good uh, simply because of the rewards uh, that uh, religion uh, promises. Ah. So I'm talking about paradise. Mm. Uh, they will also do good because they are afraid of hell. Mm. But for humans like me, mm. uh, there's nothing like uh, paradise or hell mm. uh, in my life. Mm. So why should I do good? Mm. So I do good because uh, good is good for me. Mm. And good is also good for others. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, that's the uh, the reason, as simple as that. As simple as that. Yeah. So, but oh. as a person, you cannot try. You 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 can't know fully uh, what is good, maybe for you or mm. for others. Mm. And that's why there is a need for a continual discussion mm. or engagement uh, with yourself. Yeah. You improve yourself as a human being, mm. uh, and the, when you improve yourself, it also uh, reflects. Uh, on others I would be personal with you mm-hmm. uh, how did your wife receive this kind of thinking I know you're married yeah. you have a, a little baby how, how do you navigate through this you know you know people struggle with so many things mm-hmm. people struggle with so many concepts of life yeah. and they stay within the course of that belief or that setup yeah. just because of the community because it builds them mm. um, I, I would give an example people who struggle uh, they're, being, they're being in abusive relationships, yeah. marriages. They don't want to get out because they they know that the community is built on marriage. Yeah. Mm. There are people who are struggling with jobs. Yeah. Uh, they're struggling to have a bad boss. But they're staying there because yeah. the community says if you're working, if you're a working person, then you are an accomplished person. Yeah. Mm. How did you deal with family? 
Uh, it wasn't uh, that uh, much difficult. Oh. Yeah, because I should say I have uh, an, an understanding woman wow. as a wife. Yeah. The good thing is uh, the question about uh, religion mm. was discussed even before we started our relationship. Yeah. So by the time we met, uh, it was just a casual discussion on uh, when are you going to uh, to church? Ah, yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a casual discussion as yeah. friends. So uh, from that, that is when I found an opportunity uh, to tell her mm. that I belong to this church. Mm. But uh, the questions that I have, yeah. I think uh, I will move out of the church. Yeah. Uh, for these reasons, I tried to explain uh, myself. Yeah. So she knew everything uh, uh, from uh, from the first day. Mm. So whatever uh, happened uh, later on, mm. uh, she understood because... Because you uh, had spoken about it. Yeah, she knew all the, the history. Yeah. And, 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 and I... Uh, I tried to assure her mm. that uh, even though I will be out of uh, religion, mm. you don't have to uh, worry about. Uh, You'll be the who devil. I will be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because because the concept of good has always been associated with the religion. Yeah. Uh, there's there's an argument that there's no good without uh, yeah. being religious, yeah. um, and it's funny. Mm. I I have I, I have heard about it. Mm. I have been. I've ever preached ab- around that yeah. concept. But later on, I think when I got a lot of exposure, I noted that other people who are not even religious are so good yeah. than even uh, prophets around who can just uh, abuse people because they feel they have uh, the social power. Yeah, uh, sometimes I do uh, get emotion and then I try to uh, challenge people who mm. say, uh, how can you be good without God? Mm. I challenge them, uh, tell me uh, the bad thing that I do mm. that you don't do. Mm. But they can't give me an answer. <laughs> because their life yeah. uh, with God is almost the same with I, I mine see. without God. Without God. Yeah. So, so what, what, what's the difference? Yeah, there? what's the difference? What, yeah, why yeah. should you try to say uh, you need God in your life to be good when actually... Uh, we are equals yeah, we are in our behaviors. Yeah. My weaknesses are your, are your weaknesses. weaknesses. My strength are uh, your strength. So what's your argument? Mm. Uh, they don't have uh, uh, a good answer uh, to this. Yeah. yeah. But then I think it's just uh, something which was uh, planted inside of us. Yeah. yeah. You know, in, in this podcast, I don't, I don't, I try as much as possible not to throw my views. I do sometimes uh, at a specific because of this topic. Yeah. Um, I have my own reservation. I say that I belong to church, yeah. but I have a lot of questions and I've dealt with some of them. And I know that um, I'm, a, I'm, I'm at a space where whatever that I do works for me uh, and I leave it like that. Yeah. Um, uh, I think I'll, I'll look at a guest. There's, there's uh, people who talk similar things with me because for instance, um, religion has so many things i wouldn't talk to you more about them because you don't belong to a religion so it <laughs> I, be I used good. to so you can talk about I used to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah religion is crazy it's interesting but um eventually uh religion and christianity are here they're different things so we can all n- negotiate around what which extent we we level up yeah so mm. I, uh, you have uh, brought a good point mm. uh, on what is uh, religion mm. Mm. Uh, religion is simply uh, the human beings mm. trying to find uh, meaning of their life mm. through what they consider to be a supernatural uh, power mm. so through uh, that yearning mm. uh, as they are looking uh, forward to that supernatural being. Mm. That is when uh, you see their culture coming in, mm. their views coming in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Religion is uh, just one thing, mm. but religion in Malawi is different from religion in India. Yeah. Because we have uh, people's uh, culture inside mm. uh, uh, that religion. Yeah. So that is why I still say that if religion is something that is coming from God, mm. There couldn't have been uh, this a lot of um, uh, casual affiliations. Yeah, so these differences are mm. telling you uh, that it is man uh, mm. who is trying to uh, make something uh, to connect uh, himself to what he considers to be 
a supernatural, a supernatural being. being. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I'll leave it there. I, I don't want to go deep in there. Uh, I, I might be chased <laughs> at my church. Uh, so I'll leave it there. Uh, I understand your thoughts. I want to just to give you space. I know people would segregate you, mm-hmm. would say, we don't want to talk to you. You have a devil inside. Yeah. I'm not, I don't judge like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't put limitations like that. I believe people have a right to be heard. Yeah. And views are views. What you have is a view and a perspective. Yeah. What Christianity or whatever religion have is views and perspectives and experiences that people claim. I claim experiences mm-hmm. that make me to be who I am yeah. in Christianity. Mm-hmm. I have extents and I don't do other things that other people do. Uh, and I... I claim that my experience is okay with this. Yeah. And that's where the awkward things happen happen around religion where there are extents. Yeah. So this one goes this extent, this one goes this extent, and you have doctrines and all these things. So it becomes funny. I don't want to go there. It's going to, because I have so many things to talk to you about <laughs> uh, because of um, who you are. Yeah. Talking of religion and talking of um, cultures, mm. you you fight for the rights of the elderly i've seen you doing that and i've always commended you mm. and i like your focus around that you have always dealt with an issue of witchcraft yeah well uh, witchcraft is uh, one of the issues uh, close to my heart yeah uh, well, close to my mind mm. uh, because for me mm. i used to believe uh, that it exists yeah um, and uh, when I was asking myself uh, some questions about religion, I also mm. included issues to do uh, with witchcraft. Yeah. So I looked into my life mm. and the, I saw uh, that there is no evidence mm. uh, about uh, witchcraft. <laughs> no evidence whatsoever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And, and I was uh, telling uh, this to someone. Mm. Uh, I said, you know, there is evidence in my life. Yeah. Uh, so I said, uh, what evidence uh, do you have? Yeah. And yeah. then he started uh, telling me uh, his uh, life stories. Yeah. And uh, from those stories, I tried to explain uh, to him yeah. uh, that that's not uh, witchcraft. Those are normal things mm. that have ha- have happened to myself as well. Yeah. Yeah, so seeing witchcraft in uh, a certain event in our life, mm. it is our own choosing. Mm. It's not the witchcraft inside it, uh, that thing. Yeah. We choose to see uh, yeah. witchcraft inside it. You see, I am a very controversial person mm-hmm. when it comes to my belief. And that's, that's why I say that I resonate with you in some arguments mm-hmm. because I'm a free thinker. Yeah. I'm a religious uh, to whatever extent that I go, mm-hmm. but I'm also a free thinker. Yeah. Um, and uh, I know I've struck. I've had this conversation with my wife because she's uh, to an extent this superstitious person. Sorry, Miriam, but uh, she <laughs> she has these positions. You know, I used to believe in witchcraft to that higher extent. Oh. Where, for instance, even if a fly is passing by here, you think <laughs> there is something that is being sent. If you hear a if bird at night, yeah. If you see a cat, a cat, a black yeah. cat passing uh, by the road, and oh, yes, you start, you start casting out <laughs> demons and stuff, and you start believing in these things. I have been in places where I have felt like there's in Africa there's a big exaggeration of yeah. experiences, mm-hmm. and then they tend to be realities, yeah. and they also matter to how we make decisions, specifically yeah. issues to do with the elderly. Mm. What really motivated you to now start? dealing with this issue um, after going through uh, the questions that i had and yeah. concluding that uh, witchcraft uh, doesn't exist mm. what exists is just the belief in witchcraft that that, that yeah it yeah, exists and, yeah. and not uh, the witchcraft itself mm. so and, after, and i remember you have challenged people on social media yeah. you say can you come yeah and bewitch me yeah because uh, <laughs> <laughs> You know, when you... you And people will say, you have some uh, hey, magic so, somewhere. Yeah, so that's what they claim. Yeah. They say, uh, you have some magic, and that is why you have uh, the confidence to say that. Mm. But I also have to say it uh, in this platform that I don't have anything to do uh, with uh, such kind of uh, uh, things or accusations. Yeah. There's nothing like that uh, in my life. Mm. So uh, most of the times when I say witchcraft doesn't exist, yeah. what follows are threats uh, from people. They say, you know, 
Who's uh, one? Yeah, you are going to be bewitched. <laughs> uh, and I say, uh, whatever uh, can happen to me, uh, should happen. And nothing has ever happened. And nothing has uh, ever happened. No one I, has ever bewitched you. No, I get sick. Uh, those who believe in witchcraft also get sick. I <laughs> fail. They also fail. I, I succeed. They also succeed. So my life is uh, just as normal as uh, theirs. Mm. And they, from the threats, uh, I concluded that people uh, believe uh, in existence of witchcraft out of fear. Yeah. They, they are afraid that if, if they question this thing, then something is going to, to happen to them. Mm. But I am here as um, evidence mm. because these threats are not just coming this year, mm. but they started five or seven years ago. Yeah. And but you're gonna meet some uh, some ghost. Yeah, uh, some threats are coming from uh, pastors, uh, witch doctors. But I challenge them, say, <laughs> if you think something <laughs> so can happen, to a pastor, me, a pastor do is it. Sending a threat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, 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 that's, and, that's and, where and they are make... good, and they are good at it. Uh, so this is the reason they they do that because uh, in the Bible, mm. uh, the Bible recognizes the existence of. Uh, Witchcraft. witchcraft yeah so the moment you question the existence of witchcraft you're, they you're think you also questioning the reality uh, of, um, in of the bible. bible yeah so they step in uh, as a way to protect, to protect their bible their thinking uh, yeah. their belief mm. so simply because uh, i am not uh, yielding to their threats mm. then they go forward to make the threats as a way trying to tone me down yeah yeah anyway uh, enough about the beliefs and, and stuff. But you see, the reason I resonate with your fight for the rights of uh, the rights of uh, of of the elderly, um, most of the elders in Mal elderly Malawi they are accused of being witches, yeah. being uh, practicing witchcraft. Um, it's a uh, for me it's a casual thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. being in Africa uh, makes you to believe in things that you haven't seen or things that. Uh, said about things, yeah. uh, about 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 experiences that would turn um, a thinking into mm. a reality. Yeah. I was telling you before we started having this conversation to say, I have been accused of yeah. being a witch. Yeah. I have been accused by, in fact, my relatives mm. accused me. Yeah. Mm. Uh, <laughs> some lady, <laughs> prophes was prophesying. Yeah. And I prophesied like I was a witch. And that but day, not. come on, how come? <laughs> I've asked those questions. My mom has been accused. Yeah. I was accused. Mm -hmm. And that's the day that I had questions yeah. about people's belief in witchcraft. Yeah. Because if people saw me as a witch, mm. all I've ever heard mm. were theories about being yeah. a witch. Mm. Being, and, someone being a witch. And, and that's what I uh, keep telling people. Mm. That whenever uh, an old woman is accused in desert, yeah, we think she could be a witch. Mm. But one day uh, it is going to happen to you, yeah. or that aunt uh, you yeah. love most uh, back in your village, yeah. and that is when you will realize that, that these accusations these are fake. They are fake, and they are just personal vendettas. Yeah, that's when I will. I will. I questioned the validity of what witchcraft is all about when I was accused. Yeah. It pained me. Yeah. It pained me to the core. Um, I asked a lot of questions mm -hmm. in my life. Like, what is it that qualifies me yeah. to be a witch? <laughs> By that time, I was so charismatic in yeah. my religion. Mm -hmm. And I asked myself, we are here praying together and someone is accusing me. Yeah. Oh my God, crazy. Anyway, but you see. No, okay. But, but before we go forward, yeah. uh, you raised a good point uh, mm. that witchcraft uh, is a cultural thing. Mm. Yes, uh, it is a cultural thing. Yeah. And uh, I know uh, what I will say, uh, I, I may sound uh, something to do with uh, uh, social class, but mm. I have to say it. Mm. Uh, have people ever uh, asked themselves that in the long way? Yeah. Uh, there are areas, for example, in Tandile mm. or Saint, mm. and then we have areas like Area 10 and Area 43. Mm. Between uh, these two areas, mm. uh, where do we get to hear uh, a lot of uh, witchcraft stories? Usually the pre-urban areas yeah. where they, there's a uh, our dim, what is deemed as poverty in our context. Yeah, so uh, that answers the question. Mm. 
that answers the question that uh, which uh, these witchcraft beliefs yeah are most found uh, in areas where uh, people are struggling uh, mm. with their lives. Mm. It, it, like, it, it, it Malawi feels like, is a poor mm. country. Uh, that is why we have all these uh, cases. Mm. Dandile, uh, uh, people are struggling. Yeah, compared to people uh, in area ten, and yeah. that is why you get to hear a, a lot, lot of witchcraft stories in Dandile than in area ten. You see. I have a story. Um, years ago, I was I I, I was in Taja, I think in Naperi to be specific, in Machinga yeah. district. In this area, um, there was uh, I think a while ago there was there were these um, witch doctors. They were called I think they were having some magic. They were calling it Namulondola. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you study the history of uh, the Yawas and um, uh, witchcraft in Malawi, you hear about these famous witch doctors. Mm-hmm. We were. I was really little, so when the, the 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 chiefs in the area feel like there's a lot of witchcraft happening, yeah, they, they call, call these Namlongoras, <laughs> and they would come. I would come with their Namlongora, <laughs> and it so Namlongora just means something that really tells you where to go, right? Okay. So they would grab that okay. and claim that it is it is pushing them towards a particular direction, <laughs> and they would go there until they reach their house. What really pained me, yeah. Even when I, while I, was, I was young, and I said, asking, having these questions then, is we were just following them, just seeing mm-hmm. where, where will this thing take them to, yeah. so that we can see who is rich in this, in this, mm-hmm. in this, in this village. Mm-hmm. And then we went into this other old woman. Mm-hmm. They went there, and they went to the house, mm-hmm. and they came up with stuff. Yeah. Something that someone can easily fake. Mm-hmm. What was surprising to me is how fresh the stuff that they claimed <laughs> was and i was like ah, can't this be planted this is too fresh one two the woman was too old to defend herself yeah so when they would ask a question do you practice this she's quiet yeah she's quiet because she's doing something and there's so many claims yeah she's trying she's about to speak like no i i i am not involved yeah mm. she'll say yes mm. i'm like no, no no she didn't say yes mm. she didn't say yes the woman was simply trying to defend herself and you would see even relatives that are there disowning the person and people bring a lot of torture. Mm-hmm. I ask myself, mm-hmm. if it is my mom, I of course my mom was ever accused and if I felt the pain, mm-hmm. but if it is my mom again now, mm-hmm. and someone is accusing her wherever she is, you are a witch in whatever form of accusation, how would I feel about that? Yeah. If people would stone her, mm-hmm. How would I feel about it? So uh, that's the uh, the kind of uh, I get emotional with these things, man. Yeah, that's the kind Ash. of thing that uh, most people uh, don't have. Yeah. When a situation happens uh, in Zimba, mm. they feel it is uh, something isolated out mm. of their lives. Yeah. So they will just read about it mm. and then uh, move on with uh, their lives. Yeah. But they wouldn't care uh, simply because that person is not uh, close to them. Yeah. But for me, uh, even if it happens anywhere else, mm. I do uh, make calls. Mm. Uh, talk with the family mm. to find out uh, what really happened. Mm. Uh, sometimes with uh, the police, yeah. just to get information on on, on what is uh, really happening. Yeah. So on the uh, uh, situation that you said about uh, marching, mm. so this is what uh, these guys do. Mm. Before they come uh, in in the village uh, yeah. for this particular day, mm. they do their research before this day uh, to find out. You should say so. Yeah, they do their research, and they have uh, names of uh, the suspects. Mm. So when they come at this particular day, mm. they go uh, to get uh, those suspects. Mm. So simply because uh, most people in the village they already have uh, this idea. Uh, the superstition is high. Yeah. Uh, they already have the that the idea that this uh, uh, grandmother mm. uh, is a witch. Mm. So when the witch doctor uh, goes to uh, to that particular house, mm. they think uh, he has done it because the spirits have uh, told that guy. I directed them. Yeah, but actually it was uh, that person did uh, a secret uh, research before uh, doing this thing. Yeah, and, 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 and yeah. Uh, another point you can also note uh, that most of those who are accused are. Uh, 
women, old women, yes, old and women children. and children that are usually suspected. A kid yeah. who doesn't know anything, yeah. they will just, just plant words. Yeah. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you yeah. are. Let me tell you a story. Now I remember. I was doing a project you mentioned uh, mm-hmm. in some place. I don't want to mention. Uh, yeah, let me just mention it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I met a girl. So we we're trying to do, uh, we we're trying to promote um, people trying to be free, uh, have self assurance of their lives and speak about their issues, yeah. talk about child marriages and stuff. And we had this little girl who was very isolated on the group. Yeah. So isolated. And then we were having quest we were just having conversation, talking about these things, talking about this, and everyone was contributing. And she was quiet. Mm. And I said, I asked her a question. And people started talking, like the kids starting uh, mumbling and just eh, something like that, knowing that there's something. Yeah. So I said, no, let me find out. Yeah. So I called one of the ladies, who, one of the girls who was, who was more free to talk about it. And then we went separately and I asked, what is happening? He said, no, no, this person is accused of witchcraft. So everyone knows in the village. Yeah. The girl was nice. This, I mean, this little lady who was accused of witchcraft, mm. but she was looking shabby yeah. and all that, mm. and her emotions were just looking so bad. Mm. I called her, and I had one of the ladies there, an elder lady who was helping in the project. Mm. And we had, started having this conversation, trying to find out, and I had things that were painful. Mm-hmm. Things like, they don't pay fees for her mm-hmm. because they believe she's a witch. Mm. Stays with a, a stepdad, mm. and the stepdad uh, considers her to be a witch mm. and they keep on sending her to the grandma yeah. who's also accused to be a witch mm. and I, I asked a lot of questions if this girl is abused mm. if she's raped can people even believe her claims no these yeah. are human rights and this girl will grow probably fail to go fail school because she's not yeah, being paid and, for and they should also think about uh, the psychological torture uh, yeah that she is going through yeah because uh, we want to feel accepted mm. uh, in our families yeah. or in the society. Mm. And then you are growing up, uh, family and society, they mm. don't want anything to do uh, with you. It's crazy. So uh, just imagine uh, what she is going through. And even if uh, maybe she chooses to end her life yeah. uh, through suicide, she can. People will celebrate. Who celebrate? Yeah, she, the, a wish has died, yeah, but yeah. it's a right of a person yeah. to live mm. and to defend themselves. And I feel you find a good cause. You uh, find a good cause. Yes. It pains me uh, when I see these things happening because maybe because I felt it. Yeah. I felt the pain of someone claiming yeah. that I am a witch. Mm. And I asked myself, like, come on, <laughs> guys. <laughs> ah. Yeah, so when you have money, usually you're not. Or yeah, you're prepared to be a satanist. Yeah, <laughs> when you have money, you are considered to be satanic. Yes, not a witch. You can't yeah. be a witch. A witch no, is no. for poor people, right? Yeah, when ah. you're poor, uh, you are a witch. When you are so, rich, you are a satanist. <laughs> ah, this is crazy. So, but these are things that uh, people, uh, they strongly uh, associate uh, with them. Mm. Even uh, those people you can consider to be uh, maybe educated. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. People who have uh, the capacity to question uh, some, some of these, of these claims. Beliefs, yeah. But they are the ones who are uh, in the forefront uh, telling me that uh, witchcraft is there. So they claim uh, that uh, maybe I haven't uh, gone through uh, experience. those, ex- those experiences. Yeah. But I tell them that uh, my life is not uh, that different from uh, from their own. Yeah. And maybe I maybe I've also faced uh, mm. a lot of things compared yeah. it, uh, to them. Yeah. yeah. And that's where that's where religion becomes crazy because you see there's a lot of um if people would 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 judge or not judge per se, let me just use the word judge, but who we'll, we'll assume that you're a witch. Yeah. The segregation that is there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You are deprived of basic human rights yeah. people uh, will not want to associate with you mm-hmm. and it's bad yeah and i feel this is really bad and um anyway it's part of being in africa you when you go out there uh it, you have money it's different <laughs> people, <laughs> people it's can different. people can claim and, and people laugh at some of these claims I'm like this juju oh Juju. Yeah, why does Juju does fail to to take down a plane? Yeah. <laughs> why don't you win uh, the World Cup? With the World Cup with Juju. Juju, 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 and we keep on failing. Yeah. And we have and the best Juju 
our magicians around. Yeah, but uh, nothing good is happening. And we fail even to do uh, to to build a computer, yeah. to build a mic, mm -hmm. and we're busy believing that Juju does the magic and people. Yeah, so it's but crazy. this is the uh, sad uh, reality. Mm. And it but generates it, development. Yeah. It does a lot of a damage. Lot. Mm. Yeah. But but for a person like me, I know this is how uh, things are. Mm. But uh, whenever I'm working uh, towards uh, these things, yeah, I look what the kind of Malawi that we want to have. Yeah. So I know that my efforts, Malawi, yeah, <laughs> my efforts will not be uh, enough. Uh, which we have to still be there in my lifetime. Yeah. But I think. Uh, yeah, years uh, from now, mm. people will be able to look back, mm. uh, listen to our conversations, yeah. uh, listen, yeah. uh, read what we have uh, written. Yeah, they will, they will try, then, to uh, try to uh, change their mind uh, from that uh, knowledge or information. Very true, mm. very true. And I, I hope I hope there the, should be a lot of conversations uh, around these issues. Yeah. Um, I'm a firm believer mm. in the rights of people. Mm. Uh, I'm a firm believer of having perspectives. Mm -hmm. But I'm a firm believer as well of protecting the differences of people. Yeah. Um, and it's crazy how um, sometimes being religious becomes toxic to people that are of different thoughts, uh, yeah. like you want, um, and specifically people that are deemed witches. Yeah. Um, um, we have to learn uh, to accept or embrace diversity. Yeah, and it coexists. This is how uh, progress is achieved, in, achieved. in a societal country. Yeah. So let's learn uh, to embrace uh, diversity in ideas, yeah. uh, in views, in actions. Yeah. All these have to uh, come together. Mm. And then that is how we are going to find our way, our way forward. Yeah, I think we can talk uh, hours and hours about yeah. this issue. <laughs> it's close to my heart. I've felt the pain of being accused, yeah. and I've known family members being accused mm -hmm. of very petty things, yeah. uh, created unnecessary uh, damaging relations. People don't speak to each other because yeah, of claims. Yeah, yeah. Uh, people are failing to develop each other because of claims that don't yeah. exist. And these days, it's not just about the witch doctors. Mm. Uh, the prophets are also perpetrating uh, through that the route. Yeah, yeah. they believe. So yeah. uh, when you, when you are sick, you mm. go to a prophet. Mm. They say no, it's your aunt, it's your uncle, mm. and people mm. uh, believe that. The, the so popular thing about Pamela, you remember? There was a Pamela Ohai kind of video. Of a lady accusing the other, whatever. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Ah, I hated it. I hated it because I know, and I know it was fake. Come on, I know it was fake. People can claim all those things. They can cause pain. Can they can destroy families? They can destroy relations. Yeah, easy. Yeah. It's crazy. Anyway, we can talk about this all day. Uh, we we can find some time to do a part two about this and talk about witchcraft break down the myths and stuff i am passionate about it uh and i know what people can question me about it because i am a christian but how would i question their things yeah. maybe in closing let's talk about uh politics you're a political commentator yeah. uh you appear in um, in the mainstream media to talk about politics and so many things um I feel like podcasts are places where you can be more free yeah. than the mainstream. <laughs> uh, we can talk about everything. Yeah. Uh, let's just dwell on one thing. Um, the current administration, yeah. the one million job. Mm. Malawi is one of the poorest countries. We are, we are good by the standard of what we have. Yeah. yeah. Mm. By the standards that are there, we are one of the poorest countries. Mm. Our president is a president for the poorest countries. Yeah. Uh, I think they're called FCGs. <laughs> so we know these things because we are being, uh, we have a chair at, in our ministry. Mm. The, the issue I have with the one million job promise that the current government has is I feel like it is a, an, an unrealistic yeah. milestone. Yeah, uh, we, have, we have already seen how unrealistic uh, that promise was. Mm. One so, million is counting one, two, up to hundred, yeah, and a thousand, then, and another thousand. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, no, it doesn't work like that. So just imagine mm. uh, if if our economy can be able to uh, produce uh, those one million jobs. Mm. Uh, going back a little bit, yeah. we know how electric uh, the campaign was. Yeah, uh, it was. I think 
the, the most electric campaign we We've had, had uh, yeah. since 1993. Mm. Uh, we had uh, Vice President Chirima and then President uh, Chakwera promising us all sorts of things. Mm. And uh, one of the uh, promises is the one million uh, jobs, mm. which hasn't been uh, achieved. Yeah. Uh, the major uh, challenge that I find with uh, this government mm. or the setup uh, that we have, yeah. uh, we know it is a Tonsi Alliance leading, mm. uh, but the alliance uh, was there mm. simply to win the election mm. and not to govern. That I is where uh, the challenge <laughs> the challenge is coming. Yeah, from. that should be so, crazy. Yeah, they won the election mm. and then they are inside uh, government mm. and they don't know uh, what to do. Mm. I know they will come up with uh, all those excuses, the yeah. COVID-19 excuses, uh, yeah. whatever. Mm. Uh, but when they were doing the campaign or making those promises, mm. uh, COVID-19 was uh, already there. Yeah. So if they knew uh, that this is going to be a challenge, mm. why did they continue uh, to making, advocate uh, for yeah, the same? Yeah. Yeah. Why did they make the promise then? Yeah. So uh, simply put, uh, the present government has failed. Mm. Uh, to achieve uh, what uh, it promised. It's crazy. Yeah. Honestly, um, you see the status of our economy. Mm -hmm. When you're promising a million kind of deliverable, mm -hmm. a million jobs is a, is a huge deliverable. Um, if if businesses mm -hmm. can hardly get loans to to scale their, their, their offer yeah. so that they're able to create more jobs, mm -hmm. If there are no systems where, for instance, if I employ a person today, yeah. where I will, I'll log in into a system yeah. to tell the government that I have added one, yeah. so you can, if it was one million, there will be 900,000, whatever, whatever. Yeah. If we don't have those systems, how can you claim a milestone yeah. of something that you don't have a measurement ready for? And, That's and, why I find it very realistic. And, and that is why... Uh, several months ago yeah. uh, the president had challenges answering that question when he, he went uh, to the united kingdom yeah I, I he saw was that asked uh, how many jobs uh, have you created mm. he couldn't give the answer because mm. there are no mechanisms mechanism to count yeah uh, to, to find out how many jobs uh, have been created yeah. so all the answers that he was uh, trying to give were just guesswork mm. so so imagine uh, the president, uh, mm. the head of state and government, mm. doesn't know uh, what is happening with the promise that he gave. Yeah. What does that tell you about him, as yeah. well as uh, the government that he is leading? Yeah. And I think I think for that for that incident, he could have been ready, uh, because it is you know these journalists they always get questions out of our social media feeds. Yeah. Um, he could have been ready, uh, at least have a number or have an explanation to say. As of now, we haven't counted yet, but we have an anticipation. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because uh, whenever you are getting into government, yeah. you have uh, the manifesto, yeah. uh, which is going to guide you on uh, the priorities. Mm. So, as a president, you have to keep following on what is happening uh, on those uh, uh, promises. Yeah. So, the one million promises, uh, one of the uh, major promises that we had uh, mm -hmm. during the campaign. Yeah. So, the president was supposed to have enough information. On that on that part because everyone will ask about that yeah. and people are tired i think people are not talking about the one million <laughs> job people have agreed that this is a, a, a failure yeah and uh, we, let's move on yeah probably we, let's we, talk we, about other things yeah we, like uh, the cost of uh, of cooking oil yeah <laughs> uh just yeah. Uh, skyrocketing every day just yeah and i don't know but I, th I think uh the state of politics in malawi is as of today uh, is very unpredictable. Um, there was hope in the beginning. Everyone yeah. was hoping. Yeah. I was one of the hopes. Mm -hmm. But I think going through the journey, you will know that change is very difficult to find, specifically in places where all you depend with, all you depend for um, is this aid yeah. and so many things that are there. So, and and, and uh, yeah, you have uh, raised another important point on uh, dependence uh, on aid. Yeah. Uh, we have this uh, tendency uh, among our leaders mm. that they think uh, attracting donor support mm. uh, is a promise delivered. It is not. Yes. It is not. We have agreed <laughs> to be <laughs> like uh, people are happy now. 
in Zambia. Yeah. They are praising the uh, the president in Zambia saying, no, we he, he's delivered just because he got some money. Uh, I was no. like, come on. That, we, are, we are prophetic, man. Yeah. It's crazy. Uh, that's something that we have to be uh, doing uh, away with. Yeah. Remember, it's more than 50 years as uh, independent uh, countries. Yeah. Both yeah, Malawi and years. Zambia. Yeah. So, we have to be uh, going towards a certain direction and not uh, continue uh, looking forward to the donors, to the yeah. former colonial masters. Yeah. No, no. Crazy. Anyway, I, I think there's a lot to talk about, specifically when it comes to politics in Malawi. Uh, so many things are happening. I, I, I believe uh, something will happen. Uh, whether with the no, you, you you believe I, I, uh, for me for me I I, I, I don't <laughs> you don't yeah for for this reason because yes. whenever you want to do change yeah uh, change isn't just a word uh, that has to be uh, mm. spoken yeah but change uh, is an action mm. so you have to look into uh, systems of government yeah. the institutions yeah that is where change must start from yeah but uh, for with uh, with the present government yeah they spoke about change but everything uh, remains intact it remains intact and they haven't shown that they wanted to change these systems or institutions mm. so uh, for me uh, that is why I say uh, you don't have the faith no, 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 no. In, uh, in them. Anyway, he doesn't have the faith. Mm. I have um, a bit of a faith uh, in the present government, maybe because I'm a believer. <laughs> 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 yeah, but I think I still, I still hope uh, there's still more room for them to to do a few things. Yeah, uh, but, but, but I, I just, just doubt, doubt their methodology. Them. Yeah, I just yeah, doubt their methodology. Looking at them as uh, uh, as people. Mm. I think they are qualified for the jobs that they, they have. They are qualified. Uh, Who else are we going to look for yeah, they, after uh, this? The best two politicians that we have presently. Presently, yes. So that is why uh, some of us uh, get frustrated when mm. we see uh, that they are not working according to what mm. they told us to expect. Yeah, yeah. true. Anyway, uh, let's, let's drop that. Uh, uh, what, what, what are your plans? What is happening now? Wanda, uh, you've been controversial. You have a, a column. Uh, people name you so many things. Yeah. Uh, I've seen your following is now glowing. Uh, <laughs> when you post about you being uh, uh, a humanist, uh, there's a lot of support coming to you. Yeah. Um, um, I remember, in fact, you know, I remember when there was, was that a twin Tinder guy. The guy who was popular in those in those days yeah. about being an atheist or something, the way people coined him as a witch, whatever, he suffered a lot. Yeah, uh, Tindwa uh, is uh, a good friend ah. to this day. Ah, okay. He has been quiet uh, simply because uh, he says he's old. Mm. Uh, he can't keep on uh, I'm fighting. Yeah, fighting yeah. people. Mm. Uh, but people think that he is quiet because he has been bewitched, you know. No. Oh, he has uh, believed you now. <laughs> no, he's, he's the same as uh, the only uh, Tindwa we know. Mm. Uh, he simply uh, went into retirement, mm. a quiet life, mm. uh, as he is waiting for uh, for his uh, last day. Mm. So uh, uh, for humanists, we easily talk about uh, death. I know for easily. believers, when yes. you say... No, no. If you say death... Oh, no, no, no. If you say uh, you're trying he to is create waiting for his last day, you'll be like you're say, creating no, your you to die. No. <laughs> but for humanists, uh, we see uh, birth and death as, as, a, uh, as a normal, yeah, as normal uh, thing. So of life. that is why I'm able to say this about uh, Tindua. Yeah. And uh, he is not going to be offended in any way, even if you hear. But yeah, because that's no. what happens. Yeah. Eventually, everyone is gonna die, and yeah, yeah. yeah, we're not gonna be here um, in a hundred years or something like that. But anyway, what what is up? What is next with your life now? What are, what projects are you working uh, on apart from the books you have, you said uh, you've been launching a book as soon? Uh, anything you just want to say about uh, that now? Um. I will still uh, continue uh, working on books. Yeah. Uh, I will still continue by uh, talking on uh, humanism. Yeah. Uh, talking against uh, beliefs and witchcraft. Mm. Uh, talking against uh, bad religion, <laughs> uh, because religion uh, is good sometimes. Mm. Uh, 
uh, but what has dominated uh, in Africa, yeah. in Malawi as well, is what I can call uh, bad religion. Yeah. So I will continue uh, talking against uh, those things. Yeah. So I know uh, the platforms that I have. Mm. Uh, the thing is just about uh, creating more platforms, uh, yeah. enlarging uh, those yeah. platforms yeah. to make sure yeah. I reach out to uh, more people uh, yeah. than I am able to uh, reach uh, right now. Yeah. So. And again, uh, I have met people uh, mm. who give me uh, threats and some even say uh, one day you are going to return back to Christianity mm. because they think uh, that is the truth. Mm. But I tell them that uh, I am not uh, coming back because mm. I was there. Mm. Uh, and I know what happens there. I know the gaps, mm. the questions, mm. the lies that are there. Mm. Uh, and uh, I think where I am, uh, I am uh, satisfied. <laughs> so that's wow. the wonderful coach uh, yeah. that people are going to, to see, to by, see by, going, uh, forward. Yeah, going forward. Yeah. So for whatever the consequences that um, I do suffer uh, mm. for my views and beliefs, yeah. Uh, people actually think that uh, that is, is going to be the reason to turn me down, um, uh, to put me in a place that they want me to be. Yeah. Uh, but that uh, it is not going to be uh, the situation. Yeah. Sometimes you just have to uh, suffer uh, mm. for what you think is right. It is it's normal. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Anyway, thank you so much for 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 coming for honestly. Um, I've I've I, I told you before I even open this whole place yeah. i told you that i need to have a conversation with you yeah. uh today i should i might call it even part one because there's so <laughs> many we haven't exhausted the the politics we haven't yeah. exhausted the witchcraft claims mm. um and all those things i feel like there's a lot of this this room mm -hmm. for us to talk about these things mm. uh so that we can create a bit of a safe space yeah. for people to start questioning a few things mm. uh to help themselves mm. um uh for for my claim uh disclaimer i am a believer <laughs> i'm a christian he is not uh we will coexist like that and i think yeah. i think that's a diversity that we need to 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 do to to grab yeah i was talking to to one of our uh in one of the episodes i was saying if i have a claim mm -hmm. and i believe what i believe is right mm -hmm. and i tell you that what i believe is right come if you say no I should respect your no. Yeah. And if you told me that you what you you don't believe, mm. um, what you what you're believing is fake, mm. and I would say uh, I think I'll stay here. Yeah. There should be that kind of comfortability to allow us to coexist. Yeah. I don't see that happening, and that's a big deal. Uh, and I think that divides us more. It derails development. It derails our personal growth. And it derails the whole setup. Yeah, and uh, the, uh, just a point on that. Uh, that's what I keep telling people yeah. that it's okay for you to be religious. Mm. Uh, let your beliefs start and end with you. Mm. So you don't have to <laughs> take your beliefs and then you force other people to be part of your beliefs. We call it a, we, it we do evangelism, my guy. So <laughs> no. how do we win souls? No, it should start and end with you. So we see these things in uh, issues to do with uh, abortion. Yeah. Yeah. People want uh, what they think is right mm. to also to be the same on go the other end. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I think there's a lot for us to talk about <laughs> this. Uh, but thank you so much for coming. Uh, uh, I really appreciate. Uh, I think it's gonna be one of the longest episodes I've ever <laughs> had. Uh, so many things that we need to talk about. But I, I know. Mm. Uh, let's treat it as part one. Uh, there's a lot of feedback we can do part two about this and break it down okay. to see specifically I wanted us to talk about prophets mm -hmm. uh, in this age yeah. uh, the effects of, um, of religion and stuff yeah. uh, in, in people's lives specifically in this new age religion yeah. um, you and I have done theology we know about this new age religion yeah. how um, how these cuts mm -hmm. uh, they get established and how they end mm -hmm. um, and, and how we, people can even know that this is a cut yeah um one of it which is staying on with one person yeah. becoming a one person one one man's show one woman's show mm. and when they die it ends there yeah. stuff of that nature i i think it's very important for us to have conversation like that but mm. yes i think for today this is the end uh, <laughs> uh so that yeah we can save uh some for the other episodes yeah. so guys i think if you want to see more of this yeah put your comments there what you want to hear 
uh, about um, issues to do with the religion, issues to do with humanist. I didn't talk more about the the network and stuff, how you guys talk about these things yeah. uh, and stuff. I think if you want more questions, you can just put them there, and I think I'll try my best to get him to to to, to respond to our things. So until next time, um, uh, just subscribe to the channel. Uh, make sure you like, you follow, and make sure that you are there watching whatever content that we put out because it's going to be exciting. It's going to be more personal. It's going to be deep. It's going to be uh, content coming from Malawi, Africa, and all the things that will be exciting for you. So, yeah, until next time, I remain McDonald's and you remain the viewers of this podcast. Mm -hmm.